this is not only a tale of dating spirits, but a tale of the desire to become someone's hero. Greetings, Ventures. This is Lorne, your guild advisor, and I'll be talking about the Eyes Catastrophe. When I first heard that Dom Memo was going to have a collaboration with Datalive, I was first a little shocked because I was expecting the next collaboration to either be Goblin Slayer, due to having the same light novel publisher, J.A. Bunko, or Konosuba, since the upcoming Konosuba movie is being animated by J.C. Staff, the same studio who animates the Daimachi anime. However, only one of those thoughts was on the right track, since State Alive's third and now fully released season was animated by J.C. Staff. Ironically, I joked about Data Live getting a collaboration with Damemo back in September, so I guess you can thank me for this great twist of fate. Damemo has had two previous collaborations, one with Kino's Journey and one with Attack on Titan. Each was enjoyable in its own way, especially if you were a fan of the properties. The Kino's Journey collab scenario was actually co-written between the light novel authors, Fujino Mori sensei of Damachi and Keiichi Sigsawa sensei of Kino's Journey, and you could really get a sense of that with how the characters reacted to each other. However, nothing truly mind-blowing happened during the scenario, but that is very much in the style of Kino. With the Attack on Titan collab, there was no big promotion about the authors of both works being heavily involved with the story, so we can only assume they only supervised or approved the scenario, which is somewhat understandable given the hard schedule of a manga artist, and with Amori Sensei focusing on Volume 14 of the main series that released in December, as well as Volume 11 of Sword of Oratoria, which released in January. Oh, and he wrote the scenario for that one Aero de Orion movie that came out in Japan last February. As a result, despite the fact that Attack on Titan is a huge property, the story itself wasn't ambitious and overall underwhelming. But with this third collaboration, the team behind Damemo and Amori Sensei seemed to have learned a lot from the previous two collabs and have put together an event that could only have happened through the cooperative efforts of Amori Sensei and Tachibana Sensei, author of Data Live. Rather than tell a tale simply with Data Live elements mixed into Damachi, Recycling previous villains, or just a light-hearted adventure, with other properties' characters, this story, named the Eyes Catastrophe, tells an incredibly personal story for Bell and Eyes, while incorporating the Data Live universe effortlessly, and still manages to surprise fans of both franchises. I have not talked about anything specific to the story of the collaboration quite yet, as I want to give a warning to those of you who have not yet completed viewing this event. It is very much worth it to do so, especially if you are a fan of both franchises or just Damachi. One of the scenes has managed to put tears in my eyes. Also, I'll do my best to keep out any spoilers from light novel material that is ahead of the anime. With that as my final warning, let's dive into the Ice Catastrophe. Throughout this story, we are constantly teased about Ice's past, and how that has a deep connection to why she feels these conflicting emotions that you see her monologue in first person in the very beginning of the event. As of the currently officially released light novels, Damachi Vol. 13 and Sodoratoria Vol. 8, we still do not know too much about Ice's past, but we know that the spirit Arya is related to her and likely her mother, due to the similarity in their appearances. We also know of her father, who could only be the hero in one of Bell's favorite tales, Dungeon Oratoria. Bell's appearance in the Grand Day event is heavily inspired by the armor that Ice's father wears. I'm sure that there are people who know a lot more about Ice's past, due to the fact that Volume 9 of the Sordatoria light novels touches upon it, but I myself have not looked into it as I want to avoid spoilers before actually getting to read the content in its intended format. For those interested, Volume 9 will be released on June 18th, 2019. Aiz's unique connection with the spirit Arya ties in very well with this event, because State Alive also features spirits, though different in origin. Being able to blend the two uses of spirits between the franchises together in a meaningful way is what makes this event story so compelling. Of course, I am not going to go over every single part of the story, but I will highlight my favorite moments and scenes which I believe stand out and could have some relevance in Damachi itself. Though I have watched all three seasons of Data Live, don't expect me to go too in-depth when it comes to analyzing Data Live characters and terms. I don't feel like I'm knowledgeable enough to analyze anything there because I haven't read the light novels for it. When the event starts, the conflict is truly set up and born when Kurumi, or who you believe to be Kurumi, antagonizes Loki Familia and makes them hostile to the spirits with Shido and Bell. And of course, as we know, the result of the encounter between Eyes and the spirits is Eyes getting the powers of an inverse spirit from Data Live. Her astral dress is actually based on Toka's inverse form from the light novel and anime. In this inverse form, the user becomes trapped in their negative emotions and it becomes Shido's job to mentor Bell on how to date Eyes and save her from this corruption. Finn's initial caution of the spirits due to their threats inside the dungeon 
reminded me of a certain situation in the art that occurs in the main series light novels 9 through 11. I won't say anything more than that, but the similarity in theme made me very excited for the rest of the event because of my previous enjoyment from those particular light novels. As I noted with the similar themes, we get to see how pragmatic Finn is when it comes to handling the situation with eyes losing control of herself. If there are no other options, he will not hesitate to give the order to kill eyes because the threat of her is so great. Such a drop of realism in a collaboration event is very welcome. After the lighthearted nature of the Kino's Journey event, and a rather unambitious attack on Titan event story. As veteran adventurers, Finn, Gareth, and Riveria are very much the type of characters that would make that choice without hesitation, despite their inner wishes. Going away from the serious parts of the tale, it was very refreshing and fun when the story went into the classic data life formula of the date scenes. The scenes with Shido and Toka being an example for Bell and Eyes during their dates were very cute, and any time the infamous data life multiple choices popped up, hilarity ensued, much to the credit of Tachibana-sensei. The cast of both franchises worked really well together, Kotori and Loki gelling together particularly well during the date antics. I also couldn't help but laugh when Kotori was lecturing Bet of all people. The back and forth between Kotori, Hestia, and Lily was gold, and reached a peak when they were deciding whether or not if Bell was the best candidate to date Eyes and bring her back. Lafia was even used very well comedically while not being as aggravating as she usually is in the anime. I actually liked Lafia a lot when she put her grudge against Bell aside to help him meet Riveria. As we closed the first half of this event, I couldn't help but be uncomfortable with how pathetic Bell was acting when it came to that first half finale. Bell pretty much gave up, not truly believing that he could do anything to save eyes. However, I could understand where he was coming from because Damachi is a universe where everyone has a clear defined strength in the way the levels. Eyes is the one who saved Bell in the beginning of Damachi and is level 6 compared to Bell's level of 2. How could Bell be qualified to save Eyes in any situation? So despite how pathetic Bell may have acted, it's understandable when you understand his frame of mind. Though, it is hard picturing Bell act like this given the Bell the up-to-date light novel readers know. I can't wait for the game to progress further in the Damachi canon once Season 2 starts airing. We should start to see even more ambitious event stories as a result. After Shido and Bell's initial failure, Kurumi gives them a chance to save eyes once again using Yud Bet and sends them a few days back in time. I really like this implementation of Kurumi's powers since the use of time travel allowed us to see a bad ending. It also allowed us to see Shido cross-dress in an attempt to gather information for some rather golden scenes of comedy. <laughs> Props to both of the voice actors of Bell and Shido, by the way, Yoshitsuku Matsuoka and Nobunaga Shimazaki, respectively. They did a great job voicing the two characters in this event. If any of you guys are into Sword Art Online, then I suggest you close your eyes while listening to the two characters talk. You'll hear Kirito and Bell and Yujio and Shido. The relationship that builds between Bell and Shido is commendable as well. It's much more natural than the few hours of actual time that Eren and Bell spent together in the Attack on Titan event. Bell and Shido actually relate to one another, bump heads, and support each other. I got a good laugh when Kotaru was teasing Shido about stories he made when he was younger, and Bell was immediately asking Shido about them since he's a fan of heroic tales. When Bell is down on himself and loses face by failing to show his resolve when confronted by Bavaria, it's Shido that puts Bell in his place. At first, I was wondering how effective Shido's punches would be against a level 2 adventurer. Then I remembered that because Shido has some of the spear power inside him, Due to his previous ceilings, he could definitely rival Bell in strength. Again, we see a clever use between the two franchises and one of those classic scenes when two friends duke it out to prove a point. The fact that the two of them can fight each other like they did means that they really did become close friends during this event. And of course, it's after this fight that Bell gains the resolve that he needs to face Eyes. Even Riveria along with Finn and Gareth are hoping that Bell finds the strength to save Eyes as they truly don't want to kill her. This final confrontation between Bell and Eyes is perhaps the most impactful and emotional scene we've seen at a Dom memo, and it touched me so much that I even let out tears. Riveria taught Bell that he was selfishly projecting his image of the ideal hero in Eyes when Eyes believes she is anything but that and wishes that someone like that existed. I really like how the imagery of Eyes' father is used a lot when Eyes thinks about heroes, and since we know that Eyes' father is no longer in her life, she desperately awaits for a hero that she doesn't believe will ever come. The pains of her mysterious past are what feeds her negative emotions and what beckons her inverse spirit form to destroy Horario. When Bell is questioned again by Eyes if he believes in heroes, he boldly and calmly states that he doesn't. 
Though he's inspired by the heroes in the stories he has read, he knows that those are the works of fiction. What Ice needs is not a fictional hero, but a real one. And Bell Cranel, my boy, states that he will be Ice's hero. That even though he may not be strong enough right now to save many people, he vows, he promises on a ring, that he will come save Eyes whenever she is in need. The same Bell Cranel that ran away from the Minotaur in fear during the beginning of the series and was saved by Eyes Wallenstein herself. It's in this moment that Bell finds the resolve to not just blindly chase after her, but to one day be strong enough to not just save her, but be her hero. Of course, we're not going to get the classic Data Live kiss to seal the spirit powers and settle for a ring, because such an act would have to happen in the Damachi novel canon first, but I do believe that Amori Sensei is building up the Damachi series and this relationship between Bell and Eyes to play out in a similar fashion. And this scene between them in the collab event makes me even more excited for future scenes involving Bell and Eyes when it comes to the light novels. It was a very sweet touch to see that Eyes still has the ring that Bell made his promise on, despite the fact that she doesn't remember what happened clearly. She still knows that an important promise was made, a promise made between her and her hero. Regarding the true villain of this event, I honestly wasn't expecting Kaguya to be a fake, so I was pretty happy to be surprised at where the plot was going. With the realization that Kaguya was a fake along with the Kurumi that appeared in the dungeon, you can look back at the beginning scenes of the event and actually see the clues start dropping in. And even though this villain is an original one, devised between the authors, its unbelievability works because this is a collaboration event. If we can accept that the Data Live characters somehow found their way into Orario, it's no surprise that something, an amalgam of spirit information, combined with the influence of one of Data Live's reoccurring antagonists, Isaac Westcott, could exist. When noting the spirit's malice and pleasure derived from other people's pain and suffering, Loki says the line, if Enyo existed, she'd look something like this. For those of you unaware of the name, Enyo is a mysterious being that is hiding deep within the dungeon who issues orders to Ravis. Those of you who have read or seen Sword of Oratoria should be somewhat familiar with this plotline that is slowly unfolding as the series goes on. Again, Omori Sensei teases us about material we have yet to see in the light novels. Volume 9 should remedy some of our curiosity regarding Ice's past, but I predict that we won't see much of who Enyo truly is until we are much later in the series. And according to Omori Sensei, as of Damachi Volume 14, the series has reached its halfway point, so we got a long way to go. Not only were we treated to a very emotional CG when it came to the scene between Eyes and Bell, but we also got a great CG featuring Bell and Shido brandishing Eyes' spirit weapon and Tokus and Dolphon. Ironically, they're both Tokus' weapon since Devil Princess Eyes is based off Tokus' inverse form. One thing I really liked about the penultimate scene with Bell and Shido confronting the villainous spirit is the use of first person in the text. We get to see Bell and Shido's doubts and them pushing themselves past that. In Shido's case, we see how much pain he is in. His body is constantly being torn apart and regenerating with the power of Kotori's angel, Kamiel. But sticking to the promise he made with Bell, he overcomes his pain and fights together with his new friend. Seeing that CG made me really wish we got a Shido unit, but maybe next time, as the story hints that Bell and Shido hope to meet again. And I really hope they do, and that wasn't simply an empty tease. The Tale of the Eyes Catastrophe is easily the best of the three collab event stories with how serious the plot of the story became and how easily the authors were able to integrate the characters from their different franchises and make a compelling and entertaining story. It fleshed together the mysteries of Damachi's lore with Ice's past, along with the energy and comedy of Data Live into a wonderful collaboration. We also got a hint of what we may expect to see in the relationship between Bell and Ice in the future of the series. Any collaboration events after this need to have that same sense of ambition, and I hope that the developers of Dynamo can deliver. We do have quite a few things to look forward to in the near future, as Japan's second anniversary is approaching in June. The first anniversary gifted us the Fantastic Grand Day event, and I hope they have something similar planned. Season 2 of the Damachi anime is also on the horizon in July, so we'll definitely be seeing some type of content based on that as well. And finally, we are still awaiting for when the Air of the Orion movie story will be integrated into the game. Since I Filmworks, please announce a date for the theatrical release of the movie, and let us see it before Season 2 starts and before the story is added into Don Memo. Please and thank you. I hope all of you enjoyed this collaboration event as well, especially if you are a fan of both franchises. If you came to Don Memo because of Data Live, then I hope this event convinced you to stay and keep up with this amazing franchise. If you're completely new to Data Live, it's my hope that this event sparked your interest in the franchise, and though it's a bit wacky at times, it's definitely a fun franchise that has a character for everyone to support. 
If you are impressed by the story in this event and want to see more like it, try reading The Grand Day and Winter Magic Miracle events. Both are penned by Amori sensei and deserve a read if you haven't experienced them yet. If you are interested, then you should be able to view them in Dammemo's Story Digest. And of course, if you have not done so yet, I highly suggest you read the Damachi Light novels, Sword Oratoria, and the one current installment of Familia Chronicle, Episode Ryu. Season 2 of the anime will cover more than main series light novels, Volume 6 and 7 for sure, based off the first PV, but with the official translation of Volume 14 coming out in August, you'll likely be hungry for more Damachi material when the anime ends. I don't think the second season will go beyond Volume 8, and if you want to see the best moments in the franchise, you'll definitely want to be on the light novel train. The novels are only getting better with each installment, and Volume 13 was insane. And like I said before, Sword Oratoria Volume 9 is coming out in June, and if you're tired of being teased about Ice's past, that volume will be our opportunity to learn more about her. Again, I hope all of you enjoyed this collaboration between Damamo and Datalive and are looking forward to what Damachi will bring us next. If you liked this video and would like to see more Damachi content, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. To stay updated with what I'm doing, follow my Twitter and join my Discord for discussion. And as always, Continue enjoying your time venturing in Rario and the dungeon. This is Lorne, your advisor, signing out.